Okay, a dative or coordinate bond, dative covalent. Uh, bond, sometimes also called a coordinate bond. Now, uh, a dative covalent bond involves the sharing of a pair of electrons, but both electrons come from the same atom. A pair of electrons on X, we can donate that pair of electrons and we can show that pair of electrons by an arrow um, and that is our dative covalent bond that's an L, sorry now notice that you shouldn't really show both the pair of electrons and the line there be just like that Okay, so let's just take a couple of examples of uh, of this, shall we? Let's take um, uh, ammonia, for example, reacting with boron trifluoride. Now, ammonia, NH3, its Lewis structure, showing all the covalent bonds, is like that. Now, nitrogen, you'll notice, has a lone pair of electrons. And it's that pair of electrons that we're going to use to form our dative covalent bond. And we're going to react it with boron trifluoride, BF3. Now, boron, which is in group 3 of the periodic table, has three electrons in its outermost shell and can use all three electrons in covalent bonding with three fluorines. Each fluorine, of course, will only form one covalent bond. So it uses all three electrons, but that means that it only has, in total, when it's bonded like that, six electrons in its outermost shell. It has a vacant orbital, and therefore ammonia can react with this and donate that pair of electrons into its vacant orbital. And we can therefore produce our compound NH3BF3, which looks like this and you'll notice there's our dative covalent bond with its arrow let's put all the electrons of the fluorine fluorine of course group 7 or 17 in the periodic table um, needs one extra electron therefore we'll form one covalent bond there we are uh, for our coordinate or dative covalent bond between nitrogen and boron now an alternative one here's another example uh, aluminium chloride. Now, aluminium chloride is, uh, you might initially think it's a metal, non metal, so it's a, uh, an ionic compound. But here, life's not simple. Um, uh, aluminium chloride is really somewhere between uh, ionic and covalent. Um, it exists in its solid form as a kind of layer structure, uh, so, as I say, somewhere between ionic and covalent. Um, and when you heat aluminium chloride up, very gently, it will sublime. It turns into a vapour. Um, and the vapour is molecular in form. Now, just above its sublimation temperature, aluminium chloride, AlCl3, actually exists as Al2Cl6, as a dimer. Um, higher temperatures, uh, it won't, but uh, just above its uh, sublimation temperature, it does. Now, if we take aluminium chloride AlCl3, we'll see why it does exist as a dimer. Aluminium chloride is a bit like boron trifluoride BF3, in that it's in group 3 in the periodic table, and it will use its three electrons to form three covalent bonds between um, uh, it and the chlorine. And you can see there that the aluminium only has six electrons in its outermost shell when bonded, like that. Because it only has those three electrons to bond. So again, just like boron, it has a vacant orbital. And it can use that vacant orbital uh, to add an extra electron. So we can donate a pair of electrons from the chlorine on one atom 
to form a dated covalent bond like that I've got rid of that pair of electrons notice there and a pair of electrons from that chlorine donated like that and there we form two dative covalent bonds now this molecule this dimer two monomers bonded together um, satisfies both aluminiums in terms of completing their octets they now have four uh, outer shells of electrons remember aluminium is in uh, oh it's got oh, it, oh it's nice in period three isn't it so it doesn't have four outer shell of electrons but it does have noble gas electron configuration life's not easy especially when you're trying to determine the bonding in the nitrate ion NO3 minus now both nitrogen and oxygen unlike aluminium as I said a little bit earlier um, nitrogen and oxygen are both in period 2 in the periodic table 2s and 2p uh, subshells there's no 2d subshell so they are limited to um, 8 electrons in their outermost shell now that can potentially create a bit of a problem because when we think about um, nitrogen um, we've got as we know the various combinations we're going to have to form three bonds to the uh, the oxygens there um, and you can see that we've got three single bonds with the nitrogen that we can form um, oxygen well we've got three oxygens one of them carrying a negative charge so let's put a negative charge on one of them the two others must have double bonds like that now you can see that that is not going to work if I try that and I put looks initially like it's going to work the oxygens are happy nitrogen there is using one two three four all five of it so it looks like it's going to be okay but then if you look a little bit more closely number of electrons surrounding nitrogen at this point when it forms this compound is two four six eight ten electrons it can only have a total of eight electrons around it you can't expand its octet so that in terms of bonding must be wrong can't do that so how can we go about this well the only way to do it is to uh, consider dative covalent bonding let's just see how we can do that well let's start with two of the uh, oxygens and, and see if we can satisfy nitrogen with that so what we can have of course is let's have one oxygen like that one oxygen like that now in that particular case the nitrogen's okay because it's using one two three of its own electrons it needs three more uh, electrons and three covalent bonds um, and that will be okay but well well the other oxygen of course has six electrons in its outermost shell one two three four five six it needs two more nitrogen can supply that pair of electrons in the form of a dative covalent bond you know so we're getting if I can just redraw that in a full Lewis structure arrangement so we've got nitrogen here oxygen double bond like that oxygen single covalent bond like that and a dative covalent bond to the final oxygen supplying two electrons to complete its octet and there we have the full Lewis diagram for one representation at least of the nitrate ion